Good morning. This is Brother Dallas Eaton with a hand to the plow. A hand to the plow is a primitive Baptist radio broadcast of the gospel message and is brought to you the last two Sundays of each month from 9.30 to 10 a.m. on WCLU 14.90 a.m. Or you may listen to the broadcast at www.wcluradio.com. The Hand of the Plow program is supported by Barron County Primitive Baptist Church. In Barron County Primitive Baptist is pastored by Elder Dwight Dyer and is located on Lick Branch Road in the Eastern Elementary School community. We meet each Sunday morning at 8 a.m. and would like to invite you to visit with us as we seek to worship God in spirit and in truth. Elder Dyer also pastors at Testament Primitive Baptist Church, and he and the church would like to invite you to visit them each Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. as the church meets there to worship God in spirit and in truth and according to his written word. Testament Primitive Baptist is located on Highway 87 from the Austin Tracy community of Barron County. You take 31E out of Glasgow toward the Barron River State Park. At the state park, you turn left on Highway 87 and uh, you travel uh, on Highway 87 until you arrive at the church. You'll go through uh, Fountain Run. Uh, Williams is the uh, last community that you will pass through before you reach the meeting house and it is uh, just before you get into Lafayette, Tennessee. They meet every Sunday at 10.30 Central Standard Time. And the church there at Testament would uh, welcome you and also at Barron County Primitive Baptist you would be uh, very welcome to visit with us as we gather to uh, worship and uh, praise our Lord and Savior. I would also like to announce that I will be preaching by appointment at the Barron County Primitive Baptist on Sunday, May 31st, 2009 at 8 a.m. And also in August, I will be traveling to Tidewater Primitive Baptist Church in Norfolk, Virginia to fill an appointment there as well. I desire your prayers for each of these times set aside for the gathering of the church and preaching of his word. In fact, I desire your prayers on my behalf each time the Lord would lay me upon your hearts. Now, we have some singing from the Blessed Hope of Gregory Baptist Church in Liberty, Kentucky. And afterward, we'll put our hand to the plow and study God's word. May God richly bless you. It's my prayer. To my love they still are strangers, for they're not of this poor. 
Bible and you want to read along with me, I'm going to begin reading with verse 1 and read through verse 9. And then I'm going to uh, move to verse 16 and read verse 16. And uh, if you have your Bibles there, get them. And while you're getting them, I'd like to uh, remind you and ask you to be in prayer for me as uh, I attempt to bring these programs before you uh, the last two Sundays of each month that uh, I would uh, be an humble, obedient servant of God. Now, Romans chapter 1, beginning in verse 1, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David, according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power, according to the Spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead, by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations, for his name, among whom are ye also the called of Jesus, to all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all, that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers. And now, reading if correctly read verses 1 through 9 of Romans chapter 1, and I want to turn to uh, uh, verses 15 and 16 also. If uh, we uh, can go to verse 16, Paul says in verse 15, I'm sorry, verse 15, So, as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to every one that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. I think maybe we should go ahead and read verse 17. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Now we want to make a note of verse 1 wherein Paul speaks concerning being separated unto the gospel of God. And then also in uh, verse, I believe it is verse 9, where he says, For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers. And then verse 15 and 16, where that he says, I am not, I am ready to preach the gospel to you, that are at Rome also, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to every one that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. And he says, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, The just shall live by faith. And the question may come before our mind this morning is, What is the gospel? And we can take the uh, definition that a man uh, would have uh, of the gospel and it is an old it is derived from an old Saxon word that means good tidings it is uh, was pronounced originally God's spell and it has been uh, then derived to uh, be pronounced gospel uh, in English uh, pronunciation today the Greeks called the gospel evangelical and then we call the writers of the gospels the four gospels in the New Testament evangelist. The word itself is used in modern language <coughs> and means the proclamation of pardon, mercy, and peace in and through Jesus Christ our Lord. And it is an important topic of interest in the eyes of any and all who have been made to feel that they are partakers of the saving grace that uh, is in the gospel message in itself. And I say saving grace. It is the gospel of the grace of God that we're speaking of here. So there is a saving grace in it in that way. As Paul uh, does outline here, it is said in the Bible, how beautiful 
upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publisheth salvation, that saith unto Zion, Thy God reigneth. So it is no doubt the uh, message of God's grace in salvation in that way. It is uh, speaking of it in that way. Now the definition of man would have it such that the gospel itself and the preached word is what it is that brings that grace of God unto us. But I want us to note uh, in our uh, reading here uh, in uh, in uh, Romans chapter 1 some things and looking first, if you will, in verse 17 and, and we'll try to work through some of these verses and look at some others this morning as time permits, as we're able uh, to do. In verse 17 in Romans chapter 1, Paul says, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. And what is he speaking of when he says that the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith? If we take the uh, definition of, of man's definition of what the gospel message is, the gospel message is taught and believed today among many uh, to be that which reveals, uh, which is that which we uh, hear and believe and have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ through the gospel message and thus reveal a righteousness working in us by the Holy Spirit. But the scripture here in verse 17 with Paul's, I submit to you Paul's definition of the gospel message. It says, Therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. He's speaking of the righteousness of God. He's not speaking of your righteousness, nor my righteousness, nor the righteousness of any other person, no matter how deeply they do uh, believe the gospel message as they have heard it. And we want to try, the Lord willing, and if we are able to, we want to try to show you how we believe the Bible teaches uh, uh, according uh, to Scripture, how the Bible teaches in regards to uh, the concern of the gospel and what the purpose of the gospel message is. Paul has said in uh, verse 16, he says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. And he says, For it, the gospel of Christ, is the power of God unto salvation. He says to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. And then he says, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. And he has said already that he, so much that is in him, is, he says, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome. Now let's look back at some of the opening passages of Romans chapter 1 and take a look at what Paul says the gospel is. And then we want to also go to 1 Corinthians here in just a few moments and look at another uh, a bit of definition that Paul will give that will give us a biblical foundation for a definition of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul says in verse 1, Paul a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which, he says, he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. What is he promised afore? The gospel of God is what that he is promised afore in the prophets in the Holy Scriptures. The Old Testament, Paul is speaking of, in the prophecies of the Old Testament, he spoke uh, by the prophets in the Old Testament concerning the gospel of God, which, uh, by the way, also is the same as in verse 9, which is the gospel of His Son. It is the gospel of the grace of God. It is the gospel of the dispensation of the grace of God. It is the gospel of the circumcision that was given unto uh, Peter. It is the gospel of uncircumcision that was given unto Paul. And all of these gospels, uh, even Paul says in the book of Galatians that there is another gospel which is not a gospel, but that any that would preach that other gospel, let him be accursed. And he says that there were those uh, that did uh, privately, uh, privately come into the church seeking to spy out the liberty wherein that we stand in the Lord Jesus Christ in order that they might once again bring us back into the bounds uh, of the, the uh, bondage of the law in that way and of our uh, good works. And that righteousness uh, that Paul speaks of in verse 17, if you will, just briefly turn with me to uh, Romans chapter 10. And this is why I say I believe that that righteousness of God being revealed in the gospel is not speaking of your righteousness and of my righteousness or what have you, but it is speaking of the righteousness of God. Where Paul says in Romans uh, chapter 10, he says, Brethren, in verse 1, My heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness, and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. 
For Christ, he says, is the end of the law for righteousness to every one that believeth. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. And that is a direct reference or cross-reference to what Paul says there in verse 17 where he says, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, The just shall live by faith. And then again in uh, Romans 10 and verse 4, he says, For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to every one that believeth. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. And look there in verse 6, But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, Say not in thine heart who shall ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down from above, or who shall descend into the deep, that is, to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is, the word of faith which we preach. It is the word of, of faith. The gospel message is, no doubt, the word of faith. It is, <coughs> excuse me, it is a saving message. It is, uh, does, in that way, uh, does uh, save uh, man. But it is in a way that is much different in what the man uh, does, uh, uh, does uh, proclaim or does teach that it uh, does save them today in our present time. He says, if you go on and continue on in uh, chapter 10, he says here in uh, uh, verse 8, But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is, the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then, he says, shall they call on him, on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace that bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel, for his eyes saith, Lord, who hath believed our report. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Now there's a lot of uh, folks who uh, uh, sincerely believe that the uh, faith that is being spoken of here, the, the word of faith that is preached uh, in verse 8, uh, there he says that the word of faith which we preach, that word of faith is the same uh, there that uh, uh, comes unto us uh, by the hearing of the word of God. In that way, there are those that would believe that that is by me preaching unto you or by themselves preaching unto you or by them witnessing uh, unto you about these glad tidings, about this gospel of peace that bring glad tidings of good things. But I want uh, to uh, tell you this morning that uh, the preaching of the gospel brings with itself a salvation, no doubt, as we have read there in uh, verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath uh, raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart, he says, man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Now that believing unto righteousness is a work that is accomplished in the heart, by God, that is that eternal life uh, that any individual that is born of, again or born from above uh, has experienced in their heart internally. It is an internal work. That salvation that uh, is uh, uh, brought to us or brought to that person in confession upon their lips, he says in verse 10, and then and the, uh, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Uh, that salvation is speaking of the experience of the peace of uh, God through Christ Jesus the message that is preached in the gospel and not only the peace of God but there is an assurance that is preached in the gospel there is a uh, there is a justification of sorts in that our justification uh, is from the Lord uh, freely by his grace and I believe this is also taught by Paul in the book of Romans if you uh, want to turn with me we will find it here in uh, uh, Romans I believe uh, it is in uh, in chapter uh, four, and uh, or chapter five. Uh, here he says, it may be in chapter three, three, four, and five are the chapters of justification. He says in chapter three, 
in verse 21, but now the righteousness of God, again he's speaking of the righteousness of God, not you, not your righteousness, not my righteousness, not the righteousness of your church, not the righteousness of the members of your church or of my church, nor of any uh, body uh, that would gather uh, in the, the name of the Lord to, wor to seek to worship him according to what they're able to see in the scriptures, and hopefully they are worshiping him in spirit and in truth, and there are some things in that that we might try to bring to you uh, sometime if the Lord is willing. But he says in, in Romans 3 and verse 21, But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. And that supports what Paul says there in uh, verse 2 of Romans chapter 1, which he had promised to fore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. And these things concerning his son, we'll get to that, back to that in just a few minutes. But the righteousness of God without the law is manifested. It is manifested now being witnessed by the law and the prophets. It is manifested in the Lord Jesus Christ, in the righteousness that is in him, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ. It is the faith having its source in Jesus Christ. And you know the book of Hebrews in chapter 12 says that he is the author and finisher of our faith. He cannot be the author of our faith uh, at any time this morning or any time in the past or any time in the future. He cannot be the author of our faith nor the finisher of our faith if that faith and that righteousness which cometh by hearing and that faith which cometh by hearing is by the word of God and it is a faith that comes from myself. It is a faith that Christ Jesus is the author of. It is a faith that Christ Jesus is the finisher of. He says it is unto all and upon all them that believe for there is no difference for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God and this is our justification this is the source of our justification being justified freely by his grace through what the redemption that is in Christ Jesus we are justified freely by his grace and that is through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus and then uh, here we'll go to uh, chapter 4 he says <coughs> He was delivered in verse 25 in chapter 4. He, speaking of Jesus our Lord, was delivered from the dead. In verse 24 he says uh, that Jesus our Lord uh, was raised up from the dead, who, Jesus our Lord, was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. So we have a justification in the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we might try to say a little bit more about that uh, here in just a few moments. Uh, as Paul uh, would speak again of his definition in writing to the Corinthian church in the first Corinthian letter. But then in uh, uh, chapter 5 he says, Therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Now, we are justified freely by the grace of God. That's, this is the order of our justification. We are justified first freely by the grace of God. There is no justification uh, in my accepting the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no justification in my belief of your preaching the gospel or your witness of the gospel. There is no justification in my preaching the gospel unto you. We are justified first uh, in the uh, bar of eternity uh, by the uh, free grace of God. We are justified freely by His grace in Romans 3 and uh, verse 24 he says being justified freely by his grace through what the redemption that is in Christ Jesus so it is by grace that you are saved and not by works but it is a gift of God and that is uh, the uh, grace you are saved by grace through faith and that not of yourself but it is a gift of God both the grace and the faith is a gift of God and that faith is what we're speaking of her there it is the uh, righteousness of God without the law that is manifested being witnessed by the law and the prophets the righteousness of God which is by the faith of Jesus Christ and it is that faith which is a gift of God that we are uh, recept, recept, uh, we do receive in that way the uh, then we are uh, delivered he was delivered he was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification his resurrection justified us in uh, that way in his coming into the world and uh, going uh, to Calvary's cross and uh, suffering the death of the cross despising the shame but for the joy that was set before him suffered the death of the cross and the shame of the cross in that way on account of those that God the Father had given him for whom he prayed for in John 17 and he was raised again for our justification he was raised for their justification in that way and then Paul 
goes on in chapter 5 and he says, Therefore, because of these things, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. So then the gospel message, going back, if you will, to Romans 10, the gospel message, the, the uh, gospel of the peace of God in that way that is spoken of, gospel of peace, it is that which gives us peace with God in that it is an assurance in our belief, our faith uh, in the uh, gospel message as it is preached in so much as that be as it is those that uh, are uh, the children of God are uh, led uh, by His Spirit and not only that but he, His Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. He says in verse 16 of Romans 8 the Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God and if children then ours heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ if so be that we suffer with him and we may be also glorified together these things uh, speaking of the suffering with him is speaking of those things according to our inheritance our joint heir being a joint heir with Christ <coughs> but let that be as it may let's go back to Romans chapter 1 and try to move along just a little bit the Lord willing he says that we have already looked at verse 1 that Paul is separated unto the gospel of God. And we made a, a little remark about how that the gospel of God is the same as the gospel of his son. And what is that gospel? It is that which Paul said had been promised before by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. If we read the Old Testament and we read the prophets and it's been witnessed by the prophets in the law also, we will find the promise of this gospel concerning his son in verse 3. Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David, is coming in the flesh according to the flesh and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. And in those things, brothers and sisters, uh, friends, we find our justification freely by His grace through the redemption that is in lo the Lord Jesus Christ. And then we find our justification that is... Then we find our justification that is by His work, that His life, His uh, death, burial, and resurrection... And then uh, we go on and find our justification in faith uh, being given unto us by the Lord Jesus Christ. Now let's turn real quick to uh, 1 Corinthians in chapter 15 and take another look at, at another definition that Paul uh, gives of uh, the gospel and what the gospel is as he preached it and taught it. In uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 1, and we want to read at least through verse 4, and then uh, we will try to uh, uh, say a few words and close here in just a moment. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures and that he was seen of Cephas then of the twelve and that he was seen of above five hundred brethren at once of whom the greater part remain unto this present but some are fallen asleep after that he was seen of James then of all the apostles and last of all he was seen of me also as of one born out of due time for I am the least of the apostles, that I am not meet to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we pray. Other sheep I have that wandered in the world so dark and cold to my love 